I'm Jessica Sowers, owner of Body Bliss Connection. I'm Jamie Marich. I'm a clinical trauma specialist, expressive arts therapist, author, and co-founder of Yoga Unchained. I am also the co-founder of Yoga Unchained. Chair pose, Utkatasana. Again, we will find our standing mountain posture, strong connection through the feet here. We really want to feel the mound under our big toe and our little toes, as well as our heels, and truly activate the quads and press down. We're even gonna soften the knees a little bit, maybe bounce a little here. Once we have that big connection to the earth, very gently, we set the toes down onto the ground and let them rest, but they don't grip. Being mindful of our knees, we want to allow those knees to stay in line with our hips and not open out to the sides or turn inwards towards each other. And our feet are again at that hip distance as we started in mountain pose. Let's take a nice deep inhale here. Pull that belly in and on the exhale, sit the torso back, sit your hips back and bend into those knees. The core is active, pulling up and away from the thighs. At the same time, we're hinging from the hips and our tailbone is going down at an angle, pressing back and down towards the back edge of our mat. We pull that belly in to create that nice long flat back and our heart lifts forward. To complete this, we'll express the arms in any way that feels good with soft shoulders. All of our strength and work in this posture is coming from the core muscles and the leg muscles. We have many different ways to express those arms. Prayer position is one. The traditional way is to extend and reach those arms up, biceps by the ear. But we can also reach the arms out to the sides. Let's take a nice deep inhale here. And on the exhale, stand all the way up. Ah, nice. So, what words could you use to describe that posture? Ooh, opening. Uh, feeling a very nice opening in my back. Uh, I also have a bit of a, um, I don't know, like a regalness, majesticness with this. It's almost feel like I'm sitting back into a chair, but I imagine it's a throne or something <laughs> like that. I don't know why the words regal and majestic came up for me today, but that's good. Maybe that's why. What are some of your words with this pose? Uh, challenging. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very strong posture. It's very challenging for me, but it's challenging in a good way. This is mm. not one that I don't like. I really like this posture and can embrace it. Sure, I know when I first started practicing yoga, this posture had a throwback to like squats. Yeah, <laughs> you would do in gym class or as part of his fitness training. Mm -hmm. And I, I found that learning to take it slow and not feel it's about repetition down and down, that's where I was able to experience a lot of the benefit and a lot of the opening. Right. Uh, as we've instructed throughout this series, so important to be mindful of length of time, where you may like a really nice long hold in the pose. Be aware that some students or clients who are new to doing this kind of work, small doses, and yes. also talk to us about the variability of how drastic of a seat you get. Oh, yeah. That that can be one of the challenges for this posture um, because it can create some issues in the body if we don't have this alignment correct in our hips. Sure. So um, one of the things that we want to do, first of all, to lessen the challenge in this posture, you can not bend so deeply into mm. it. But one of the things we want to keep in mind as we're building this posture is how we're sitting back. We really want to be able to bend those knees and press the hips back behind mm. us. So that tailbone actually, it doesn't lift, but it's pressing up and back towards that, yeah. towards the back edge of the mat. A lot of times people try to tuck the tailbone mm. under and bend, and this creates this tension and strain on the low back and in the knees. It also has a tendency to want those knees to go wide, which is not very good for this posture. We can create some injuries there. So being mindful when, you're, when you are sitting back in the posture to not tuck that tailbone under and round your spine. Right. You wanna actually press it back and down at an angle so that it's coming back, so you're actually sitting back. One of my teachers made a little funny joke, and I like to share this because it really made me understand it. Me too. <laughs> she said, when in doubt, stick it out. And that's exactly what you do. You stick that tailbone out mm -hmm. to sit back. Another thing that you wanna keep in mind as you're building this posture 
is when you're sitting into it, you should be able to look down and see your toes. Yeah. If your knees are too far forward, then you're not sitting back enough for that alignment and to really get into the quads and the hamstrings. You should be able to see those toes in this posture. And I'm really glad because I, I like when and dad stick it out and in certain <laughs> venues and groups it can be a fun yes uh, adjunct to you teaching this pose. But I like how you even said sticking the tailbone out because mm -hmm. something we're very mindful of in trauma sensitive yoga is how we cue certain anatomical words right. in certain venues. And so with certain groups you may be fine to say things like butt or buttocks but with other groups it may be better to introduce the word tailbone exactly. or bottom um, just always being mindful of your language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk modification. So I assume since this is called chair pose, we could use our famous chair. We could use a chair in this posture. So you can utilize that chair fully by sitting into it. So to come into chair posture with the chair as the prop, you know, find your mountain pose. Let's do this at an angle. You want to do it sideways? Yeah, okay. I think that'll give a little give more of our viewers a little better yeah. angle. So you'll come into that posture from your mountain pose and you'll start to sit the body back just mm. like you would and you can allow the backs of the thighs to touch that chair and stay here this is very strong yeah. you have to have good core strength in the legs but you can also sit the rest of the way down so that the thighs connect a little more firmly to that seat in the chair but you want to try to keep the tailbone off the chair so you're not just sitting mm -hmm. You want to try to keep it elevated. The other option is to just sit and activate through the belly and reach the arms forward a bit. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. nice. Is the wall an option with this? Wall one? is a fantastic option for this because it also keeps the power in the posture. So you would come to Tadasana in front of that wall and you want to make sure your feet are probably about four to six inches away from the wall here. You'll inhale and on the exhale, you'll bend those knees, stick your bottom back, tailbone reaches back, and sit down into that posture. That's nice. Yeah. Feels like I have even another element of grounding. Mm -hmm. So for folks who may struggle a little bit more with feeling off kilter yes. or struggling with grounding in this, the wall can provide that support. It is. Another thing with the wall for this posture too is it can help a person to feel a little more secure. Mm. It gives them that little bit of um, support that they could be looking for in life and in the posture period. Yeah. So it gives them a little more support as they're into that wall, but also for some people who may have suffered from trauma, it allows them to, that wall has their back. Yeah. It's really a little protective. There's nothing that can come between them or behind them. So this can be a little bit more empowering for them to really sink into that posture and, and embrace it. The wall is an excellent yoga prop for grounding, yes. especially with the trauma sensitive angle that we're very keen about attuning to and we'll be featuring the wall in other videos in this series. Yeah. So thanks for joining us for chair. Thank you.